like to give you a thrill. Sounds like at least half a dozen. Tables out on the lawn and some chairs. 
Julia, I don't think I'll be able to get all these things done. My dear Edmund, they've got to be done. And before the guests begin to arrive, you'd better change your clothes. Julia, have you ever thought that someday I might stop saying, yes, Julia, yes, Julia, of course, Julia? Edmund, that would be quite enough. I forbid you to think such thoughts. <sighs> yes, Julia. Yes, Julia, that seems to settle that. Or does it? I've got to get rid of her. I've got to get free from Julia. Oh, dear. I know what I've got to do. I've got to kill her. Richie, old man, don't overdo it, you know. Murder's a serious business. If you get caught, it can be very annoying. Yes. Uh, how are you, Dennis? Fine, Doctor. And you? Uh, 
Dennis is just leaving. Thanks for the beach party, Madeline. It was fun. Goodbye, Dennis. See you all later. Goodbye, Doctor. Yes. Goodbye. See here, Madeline, I hope you aren't wasting much time with that fellow. Now, Ducky, you have no right to be jealous. Of course, I have no claim on you, Madeline. But you know I'd marry you in an instant, darling. If things were different. Mm-hmm. Yes, and things may be different, Madeline. Edna. Sooner than you'd expect. You're very sweet. You know, I'm worried about Julia. Oh? She's been suffering from terrible headaches. And lately, she's been slipping into my laboratory and giving herself shots to relieve the pain. I'm afraid it's getting to be a habit. How dreadful. Dreadful? Yes, I I want to help Julia, but I, I, I just don't know what I can do. Oh, I think you're doing more than enough already. Is that what you came here for, Ducky? To tell me about your wife? No, Madeline. I came here to be with you. That's quite a line you've got there, Ducky. For a man who's getting along in years. Well, it all adds up. Every morning, a grapefruit for Julia. A grapefruit a la Bixley. Followed by a headache. Followed by a hypodermic needle. And be sure you tell everyone, Doctor. Tell everyone in town about poor Julia's headaches. And what she does to cure them. Ridiculous engagement. 
We'll drive to Connecticut tonight and be married. Immediately. What about Julia? Julia's dead. Dead. Oh. Oh, Dr. Bisley. You aren't supposed to know that Julia's dead. Yet. Hello. Where's well, Dr. Bisley? Is there anything wrong? Oh. Well, that's dreadful. Yes, I'll tell him right away. No rush, Dennis. He knows. And so does Madeline. injections of morphine. But he must have taken an overdose. That's all. Too bad. Too bad. Fine woman. Oh, the best. The best. You can uncross your fingers now, Dr. Bickley. Uh, say, Bickley, uh, remember that vanadium compound I sent you? The uh, headache stuff? What? Oh, oh yes, yes. The uh, the antidote for uric poisoning. Well, old Mrs. Kustenton's had a relapse, and I'm afraid I'll have to borrow some of it back from you. Hope you don't mind. Why, uh... Well, it, it's all gone. Oh? Did you have a case of uric poisoning, too? Who, who was it? No, not exactly. I, uh... I was making some experiments. Oh, some experiments. Well, no matter. I'll order some more. I have to go on home. Thank you. It's kind of you to stop by. Heading late, you know. Yes. Uh, say, quickly. Uh, yes? One other thing. What was it made Julia start taking morphine? Headaches? Yes, uh, a tumor of some sort, or migraine. Oh, well, we'll never know. No, I don't suppose we ever shall. Well, good night, Bickley. He don't see you. A sure fate, Bickley. He's figured out exactly how you got rid of Julia. And if Liston and Madeline Cranmere ever go to the police together... You're probably hanged. Oh, uh, pardon me, Doctor, I forgot. The state of New York employs, uh, electricity. <laughs> well, it, uh, it certainly was nice of you.
of you to come to my little party. I just thought we ought to establish friendly relations again all around. Well, it was good of you to ask us, Dr. Bickley. Well, frankly, Dennis, I hardly expected you... But you didn't think I'd come alone, did you, Edmund, without my new husband? Oh, have you and Dennis actually tied the knot? Well, now, isn't that grand? Please accept my congratulations. Thank you, Doctor. Very sporting of you. Not at all. Uh, oh, do you two know Dr. Lidston? I don't believe we've met. No. This is Dennis Bourne and Madeline Crabb here. Oh, Mrs. Bourne, I I always have. Now, this is a curious thing to do, Dr. Brickley. Why don't you go up your sleeve and deliberately bring together the two people who can prove you're a murderer? Well, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll just step out into the kitchen and see if the refreshments are ready. Oh, refreshments. Oh, you're fixing the refreshments, are you, Doctor? What'll it be, grapefruit? Or aren't you going to bother with suspense this time? I hope you all like devil ham sandwiches. Oh, I simply adore them. Madeline, you don't know what you're saying. I have an idea. Why don't you go on a nice diet, old girl? Say, Brickley, what's that yellow stuff you're mixing with the mayonnaise? That stuff from the test tube? Are you putting a little extra devil into the deviled ham? Well, here we are. Everybody fall to help themselves. Oh, don't they look good? Mm -hmm, They look almost good enough to eat. Almost. I'm going to eat one of these, even if it does spoil my dinner. <laughs> Dr. Lidston, you'll be amazed how many dinners that sandwich is going to spoil. Hold on, Dr. Bigley. Don't I get any? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want a sandwich, Dennis? I'm starved. Well, I'll go out and fix you something else. Oh, don't bother. I'll take one of these. Oh, no, I... I... Have you tried to stop him, Doctor? No reason why young Dennis should go the way of Lidston and Madeline. But what could you do? Talk to you, Doctor. I'm Lieutenant Russell, homicide squad. Homicide? You mean some of my guests have died? I didn't say that. You put two and two together pretty fast, Doctor. Why did you feed poison sandwich to Mr. and Mrs. Bourne and Dr. Lidston yesterday afternoon? That's absurd. The meat was spoiled. That could have happened to anyone. Why, you, you can see for yourself. I'm sick of that. Do you have typhoid fever? Typhoid? You have it on pretty good authority, Doctor, that lethal quantities of typhoid fever germs don't usually breed on deviled ham sandwiches unless somebody puts them there. Typhoid? How in the world could... What happened, Bickley, old man? Did you put the wrong germs from the wrong test tube on the wrong deviled ham sandwiches? Dr. Bickley, I'm afraid I'll have to arrest you on the charge of murder. Did they both die? Madeline and Lidson both? They're arrested on the charge of murdering your wife. My wife? Now, how the deuce did Julia pop up among the devil ham sandwiches? But you've no evidence, no evidence at all. You shouldn't have said that, Bixley. You'll hear the evidence, Doctor, when the time comes. Madeline got over the sandwiches, too. 
She is looking at you with a very friendly expression, uh, Ducky. I see she's dressed all in black. Mrs. Bourne, uh, suppose you tell us in your own words exactly what happened on the second floor of your house in Wyvern Cross on the morning of the ninth day of April, 1947. Well, the prisoner, Dr. Bickley, burst into my room and demanded that I break off my engagement with Dennis, my late husband. He said I must marry him. I asked him what about his wife, Julia. And he replied, Julia is dead. Mrs. Bourne, was this before or after Dr. Bickley received the telephone call informing him of his wife's death? Immediately before. While the prisoner was speaking. It seems to be getting a little warm in here, doesn't it, Doctor? All your affairs in order? Is your will all made out? Life insurance premiums paid up? It better be, because it's getting around in insurance circles that you're not a very good risk. for the jury. It is a scandalous outrage against justice that the defendant should even be on trial before you. Who is Dr. Bickley? An outstanding physician, public servant of long standing, man of unsullied reputation, a man who is unquestioned ah, was unquestioned in the community. And what is the evidence against him? The dubious testimony of one Madeline Bourne, which cast some vague doubt over the exact moment at which Dr. Bickley learned of his dear wife's death. And as for the testimony of the prisoner's colleague, Dr. Lidson, his only evidence proves that the defendant was in possession of certain chemical compounds which every doctor of medicine in the United States is authorized to have in his laboratory. What sort of evidence is this? I represent to you that the prosecution's case against Dr. Bickley is nothing but guesswork, 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 and that Dr. Bickley is as innocent of this heinous crime as you or I. Consultation room or the chair. The jury finds the defendant not guilty. Today's <laughs> court is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for a very fair trial. But thank you again. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye, everybody. Oh, goodbye, Lieutenant. Thank you, Paul. Uh, just a minute, Doctor. Yes, Lieutenant. It is my duty to arrest you on this indictment. That you feloniously and with malice of forethought did kill by means of poisoned food one Dennis Bourne. Well, poor old Doc. He sort of liked Dennis. And he never meant for Danny to eat that devil ham sandwich. But on the 19th of September, Poor Dr. Bickley went to the chair for poisoning Dennis Ball. Now, let that be a lesson to you. I tell you, murder's a serious business, and the slightest slip can be disastrous. As for me, I think I'll fit the motion picture directing. For a while, at least. The occupational hazards aren't quite so high. <laughs> been listening to the Alfred Hitchcock Show. Original music was composed and conducted by Claude Sweeten and arranged by David Stretch with Dr. Samuel Hoffman of the Theremin. Members of the cast included Joseph Kearns, Edmund McDonald, Jeff Corey, Janet Waldo, Norman Field, Margaret Brayton, John Daner, and Tom Harlan. Your announcer is Owen James. Mr. Hitchcock was our director, and dramatization and production were by Lawrence and Lee. <laughs> 